let's meet the man behind the legend of Bigfoot. The man who started the entire monster truck craze, Bob Chandler. Bob, where did the idea for a monster truck like this come from? Well, it's something you don't, uh, I didn't sit down and, and decide that I was going to build this monster truck from the start. It just grew over 11, 12 year period. And it's not only my ideas either, it's ideas I pick up from my employees and my, you know, other help. Uh, this started out as a 1974 Ford that we, uh, my wife and I would take camping. Uh, we'd take the camper body off, we'd play in the river with the truck. Uh, we'd have problems because of the weight I pulled and uh, we end up putting a bigger engine in it. When you put a bigger engine in it, then you start breaking parts. So uh, I had to go to bigger axles. And you put bigger axles in, I put bigger tires on it because you want bigger tires to get you, you can travel better off-road in the river and things. Tires are the first thing most people notice about this truck. Standard issue on Bigfoot are 66-inch Goodyears. Now, they cost $3,500 each and weigh nearly half a ton. <laughs> but no, now these tires aren't big enough for Bob Chandler. So, get the picture. Bob one day is up in Seattle in a salvage yard. He's rummaging around, and he comes across a set of 10-foot-tall Tundra tires used on a land train in Alaska. tires weighs 2,700 pounds and originally cost about $30,000 each. In one mile, these tires turn only 161 times, as compared to 1,000 times by an ordinary tire. Most of the great ideas that have gone into Bigfoot, the 10-foot tires took a huge effort to pull off. Even the 6-foot tires are no easy chore. Slow, continuous growth is the real secret behind Bigfoot's awesome power and the flawless ability to use it. Mammoth tires made a colossus out of Bigfoot, but the tires are only the delivery system. The heart of this beast is a monstrous power plant. Power starts here with a highly modified, supercharged Ford V8. It costs about $35,000 and does the work of about 600 ponies. This truck, Bigfoot 4, is set up to crush and pull. All right, Ford man! The Bigfoot family began with four brothers. Bigfoot one through four. Each tuned for a special job. Bigfoot one with a thousand horsepower is the star of hill climbs and brute power events. Then there's Ms. Bigfoot, a 1985 Ford Ranger. This dainty monster's smaller size, coupled with a 750 horsepower engine, makes her a unique competitor. Finally, there's the newest member of the monster family, the Ford Aerostar. One thing they all have in common is an appetite for 118 octane racing fuel. Fill up the gas and 118 octane, check the oil. What do you say we check the oil, boss? For car crushing, you need power and strength up here in the axles. Five-ton military housings at 7,500 bucks a pop take the beating when this 14,000-pound monster comes down. Now, you add to that 
14 shocks, four $2,000 custom wheels, and hey, you're ready to roll, uh, or rather crush, in a $150,000 monster truck. You didn't get that first idea sitting in traffic by any chance, did you? No, no, the, the, uh, the car crush, uh, uh, one of my employees, my partner when I went into business, Jimmy Kramer and I just went out in a lot one time to see what it would do on, on two cars, and we run over some cars, and videotaped it, and we showed it in our shop. You know, it was promo for our shop. A uh, promoter come in one time and saw it and said, I want to see you do that in front of a crowd. And, uh, it took us six months before we finally decided to do it in front of the crowd, but uh, we did one time, and no matter what we do nowadays, they, everybody wants to see a car crash. from behind the wheel of Bigfoot is unbelievable is the only way to describe it. At first glance, the controls look pretty much like a regular truck, but there is one important difference. Bigfoot steers with all four wheels. And the steering is all done hydraulically. A mechanical linkage could never hold up to the incredible strains produced by the huge tires. Bob, four-wheel steering must be pretty tricky. No, Joe, it's really easy because you steer the front just like a regular vehicle with a steering wheel. That's, that's normal. The rear is steered with that toggle switch on the door, and once you get the hang of, of which direction it steers, it's easy to drive. Now, I know for any fan of Bigfoot, the biggest thrill of all would be to take it for a spin, so what do you say? Am I going to get a shot? Let's go. Let's give a <laughs> shot. All right. The first thing you notice when you get behind the wheel is the incredible power. Now, from inside the cab, the supercharged engine sounds like a nitro-burning dragster heat and oil pressure warning lights stare you in the face. And if your right foot stays heavy for too long, they're going to go off like a four-alarm fire. Even with an automatic tranny with all that engine up front, starting out smoothly isn't easy. Slip into drive, touch the accelerator, you lurch forward like a freight train. This isn't the kind of truck where you can sip coffee and talk on the CB as you drive. The gearing is so low, if you take your foot out of the bucket for an instant, the huge tires will drag you down to a crawl. Then there's the four-wheel steering. The rear wheels turn hydraulically, but your brain is still looking for a steering wheel somewhere. It would take some practice to get everything going the way you want it. But as long as nobody gets in your way, with a little practice, at least on an open field like this one, you can feel like a Bigfoot veteran in no time. I'm ready to crunch some cars. I'm sold. Driving this baby is as much fun as I've had driving since I first slipped behind the wheel. And I'll tell you something. Have one of these monster trucks parked in your driveway, and you'll really give those uppity yuppies something to think about. Think about that, that time when you first went out to a packed stadium, and I bet it was packed, and you'd crush these cars f for yourself, but never for a group. What was going on in your mind? Well, you worry a lot about if, if it's going to go over, if you're going to have any problems, if there's trucks going to fail, if you're going to uh, break an axle, if uh, you're going to blow a tire out on the cars. You know, beforehand, you, I get nervous. And I get very nervous. But once I get in a truck and start it up, then it's, then it's old hat. You, you know, you're comfortable behind. I'm, I'm comfortable behind the truck, and I can just go right over the cars. After it's done, you get the reaction from the crowd, then you get another, another feeling. Or just 
just an imitation. And for Bob Chandler, there's no idle time. He's always thinking of new and innovative things for Bigfoot to do. I get most of my ideas from driving down the road in a truck. When you're sitting in the hauler and you spend hours and hours just sitting there driving down the highway, your mind wanders and you come up with the weird ideas and it seems like the weirder the idea, the, the better the people seem to like it. So. And this is what it feels like to be in the driver's seat for a crush. hanging on the steering wheel and you put your foot down on the throttle and you go flying through the air. According to Bob, it's not all that dangerous if you're in the right truck, so don't try this with yours at home. These days, Bigfoot is challenged by more than just crushing cars. The events require a combination of skills. Dig a six-foot deep pit, 200 feet long, and fill it with dirt and water. And what do you have? The meanest, messiest mud bog you ever want to see. You could sink the family car in this mess and never see it. But for Bigfoot, this is just a roll in the hay. Let's go mud bogging! Cleaning up Bigfoot after a romp in the mud is a job you wouldn't even want to think about. The entire truck is stripped down to the bearings, a several thousand dollar job. Bob spends about 75 grand a truck each year on maintenance, but that's what it takes to stay number one. Bigfoot's got the world of monster trucks all wrapped up, but he does have some rivals in the tractor pull. Check out these triple supercharged, fire-breathing mean machines.
Bigfoot's world than just stadium events. Bigfoot's a truck for the great outdoors, like a hill climb. This is one of the most dangerous events and Bob's greatest challenge. For instance, this one that we do every year is called a gravel rama. That's a pea gravel hill that's 270 feet high and it's a 75 degree angle. And there are vehicles that flip on it. Uh, they go over the top. If they make it over the top, then they'll go completely over, over and land on the roof on the other side because it's a peak. You go off one side and you gotta go right back down the next side. Uh, we tried this thing four years in a row and this year was the first time I ever made over the hill. They've never had anything go over that hill that was over 5,000 pounds and my truck at that time weighs 13,000 pounds. So it really was a thrill for me to finally get over that. You know, even though these tires weigh nearly 1,000 pounds each, Bob Chandler had the crazy idea that they might have enough air in them to float Bigfoot. And he was right. Bigfoot is the first monster truck that's truly amphibious. And the huge tire treads act like paddle wheels. We've gone down the Mississippi River and we had a race with a paddle boat in Chattahoochee River in Tennessee and we've had a lot of fun with the water. Boy, this truck is definitely awesome. You get the feeling that Bigfoot could take you anywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, Bob tells me that he'd like to run the Great Wall of China someday. Can you imagine that? What if he made it all the way to Tibet? That means that Bigfoot would finally get to meet the abominable snowman. I wonder who'd win. 